Hi everybody, Abel here, product specialist at Zeiss. And today we're gonna to run through some tips for mounting our hardware to the film camera. For this setup, we're using the camera bar and link, and we have our origin wrapped elsewhere. It's important to note that when we're rigging our camera bar, we want it securely mounted to the camera. As the camera moves in space, whether it's indoors or outdoors, it's vital that the camera bar and the film camera move in the same orientation together. So let's start off with our camera bar. For this, I'm using a small rig mount. These are really handy because you can manually adjust them um, and tighten them to the rig. So if we mount our rig here. So with that mounted, I can now slightly tighten um, the screw. And then next, I'm gonna mount our camera bar to this mount. And now I can tighten up our screw at the back to ensure that the camera bar doesn't move once the camera is flowing. There we go. So as I said, when the camera, the film camera moves, we want our camera bar to move in the same orientation and not tilt anywhere. Next, we've got our link component. The link component doesn't necessarily have to be as rigidly mounted as the camera bar but it's good to have it obviously securely mounted and out the way of any uh, monitors, screens, any ports that you might end up using for other devices. We just wanna have this um, as neatly tucked away on the camera rig as possible. Okay, ugly spin. So now that we've got our link component mounted to the film camera, we're ready to go. We have our camera bar front mounted. Again, it's securely rigged and rock solid. So when I move the camera, the camera bar itself sticks into position. So we want them to move in tandem together. The link component, we've kind of neatly rigged. It's out of the way of any ports that we might use for power or encoders. Uh, and it's not blocking any of our monitors on the film camera itself. So with our camera bar front mounted and on this type of mount, it allows us to move the camera bar in almost any direction. For example, if we were tracking from reflective markers in a studio, we could tilt the camera bar up. If we were using natural features outdoors, we could tilt the camera left, right, or even down. Totally depending on your environment and how you're tracking in your space. But it's really helpful to have um, a range of different mounting options so you can mount your camera bar suitably to your camera. So here we've got a slightly different setup for our camera bar. We've mounted it using a magic arm. What we find with magic arms is they can be knocked out of position quite easily. Even when they're tightened up, they're quite easy to manoeuvre. Um, if someone knocks the camera bar on site, your camera tracking is going to be affected. So we always want to have a securely mounted camera bar. Magic arms aren't the best solution. Another quick rigging tip is to have our camera bar actually mounted below the lens. Now in a situation where we're tracking outdoors, that would be the ideal kind of rigging position. Having the camera bar below the lens would allow us to tilt the camera down at the ground. Maybe that's where we're taking our natural features from. It also allows us to avoid as much direct sunlight as possible. Uh, if we wanted to rig it below the lens, we could use uh, classic industry rods with a rigging mount similar to that where it can slide directly onto the rod mount and then we can tighten our camera bar onto the top of this mount. So now that we have our cam bar and link mounted, we can now connect our tethered loom from camera bar to link. We have our USB-C, which should click into our link. We have our Genlock. And finally, we have our camera control unit. 
Once those three are in, we're ready to go on this side of the camera rig. So now that we have our tethered connection between our cam bar and our link, it's now time to connect our link back to the origin. So we'll start off with our lockable ethernet to send our tracking data. And to power our link, today we're using our three pin Limo, which we'll plug in. All of our power connections to the link can be fastened. And of course, cable management is up to you. Now it's time to plug in our encoder. Our system is able to read lens data over SDI using ARRI LDS. However, if you don't have that workflow, we can simply use our encoder. So this is our second configuration where we're going to mount the origin directly to the film camera along with our camera bar. Now of course the link and cam bar configuration has a bit more flexibility but this is still a viable option. Now we're going to be mounting it using uh, magic arms. As mentioned we've got our mounting ports on the back, top and sides of our server. You may want to use two magic arms or two mounts due to the weight of the origin. It's slightly heavier than the link. Um, but yeah, let's get our rig complete. So now that our origin is securely mounted, we can now plug in our tethered connection from our cam bar to our origin. We have our USB-C. We have our camera bar control. And finally, this is where our Genlock source will be plugged in via SDI. So with our camera bar connected to our origin, we can now connect our final two connections. We're going to be using our mains power supply to power the origin. And secondly, we have our ethernet, which is going to be sending the tracking data back to our render engine. And that goes into the LAN port. Now, of course, our origin, we can connect to this remotely using any device on the same network. However, if you're not on a network and you can't access it remotely, you would have to plug in um, a monitor, display port, HDMI, and of course, a keyboard and mouse to use the software. So thank you for joining our rigging tutorial, and we'll see you at the next one.